Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So guys, we see this mysterious and deadly virus that's causing lung lesions. It's infected hundreds and it's sweeping through China and now Japan as well. Uh, scientists are warning about this. And we see this is out of the sun, uh, but there's a lot of other places that are talking about this as well. There's video here for you guys. It's a SARS-like virus, for those of you that remember SARS. And again, it's causing lung lesions. It's killed two people, and it's spreading across Asia. As you see right here, medical staff members carry a patient into the Jingtian uh, Hospital where patients infected by a mysterious SARS-like virus are being treated. Obviously, anytime we see people in suits like that, it's kind of creepy, kind of scary. Don't you agree, Cindy? Come Really scary. Yeah, so, you know, of course, and in this world, too, if you got to travel all the time, you know that when you're on a plane, you're just you're exposed to so much stuff. And of course, China and Japan are, you know, separated only by a, a sea there. So, you know, you're going to wonder, you know, is this something big or is this going to be something that fizzles out? Let's hope. Now, there's been 45 confirmed cases at this point of this article. Scientists fear up to 1,700 have been infected. Of the confirmed cases, two people are known to have died due to pneumonia caused by a new coronavirus, which appeared at Wuhan City in December. Five others have been reported to be in critical condition, and 22 are in stable condition at Wuhan Municipal Health Commission. But a report published by the London Imperial College's MRC Center for Global Infectious Disease Analysis claimed that there are likely substantially more cases of the new coronavirus that has been formally reported. A summary of the report estimates that there would be 1,723 cases showing onset of related symptoms by January 12th. UK disease outbreak scientists working with a team at Imperial College Professor Neil Ferguson told the BBC, I am substantially more concerned than I was a week ago. Earlier this month, Chinese researchers said the mysterious illness that had spread in Wuhan was caused by a new type of coronavirus, which at their weakest can cause mild cold-like symptoms, but at their most dangerous, they could lead to SARS. And so coronavirus is an airborne virus spread in a way very similar to colds and the flu. The virus attacks the respiratory system, causing lung lesions. Symptoms include runny nose, headache, cough and fever, shortness of breath, chills and body aches. It's incredibly contagious and is spread through contact with anything the virus is on, as well as infected breath, cough, or sneezes. In 2003, an outbreak of a similar virus, SARS, infected more than 8,000 people in 37 countries before it was brought under control, killing 800 of those worldwide. That was a 10% rate. The virus may have already spread to Hong Kong, South Korea, and Taiwan. So Professor Ferguson explained that while it was too early to be an alarmist, uh, people should be considering the possibility of substantial human-to-human -human transmission more seriously than they have so far, saying it was unlikely that animal exposure was the main source of infection. The original outbreak of the virus is believed traced back to a seafood market in Wuhan. However, authorities said some patients that have, have uh, been identified deny having any exposure to this market, which has been completely shut down since January 1st. And uh, you know, as you see, the people taking precautions. You know, we should always take precautions. You know, things like, you know, having in the car or the vehicle, um, hand sanitizer and just like when you go pump gas you know go ahead and sanitize your hands things like that of course you know if you are going to be forced to be in confined places with a lot of people it's tough to take a lot of precautions you could wear a face mask in public as, as this person is doing so Wuhan's one of China's biggest cities and it's also home to a major airport and obviously in this world Things can spread pretty fast with all the people that travel through these airports every single day. So Thailand reported two cases of the coronavirus from Chinese travelers from Wuhan this week, while Japan confirmed one case involving a Japanese national who traveled to Wuhan. And Professor Ferguson told the BBC that caused me to worry. For Wuhan to have exported three cases to other countries would imply there would have to be many more cases than are being reported. 
The emergence of the virus is raising concerns as hundreds of millions of people get ready to travel during Chinese New Year holiday later this month. WHO has advised against the travel ban, saying there is no indication the disease is easily transmissible amongst people. And uh, here you see healthy screenings appear in Jap Japanese uh, airports following the outbreak of the mystery virus. Some people taking precautions, others not. So this hasn't deterred authorities in Hong Kong stepping up detection measures, which include rigorous temperature checkpoints for inbound travelers from the Chinese mainland. And the U.S. also said from Friday it would begin screening flights arriving from Wuhan at San Francisco Airport and New York's JFK, both which receive direct flights as well as L.A., where many flights connect. And so we see over here uh, another article talking about this and how it will have infected hundreds of people. And again, this is out of CNN. China's coronavirus cases likely grossly underestimated, so says the study. And talking about the U.S. to screen airline passengers from China for the new illness. So how worried should we be? That's really a good question, you know, in this world. We know, you know, the conditions that led to other plagues, quote unquote, and diseases and uh, how fast they can spread. And it's always good to take whatever precautions we possibly can. And, uh, you know, again, in this world, it's so important to keep your immune system up. There's so many ways you can keep your immune system up. Because obviously people with compromised immune systems are going to be more susceptible. So one of the best things we could do is simply get out there and exercise. Exercise every day if you can. At, at least five days a week. You know, get in a good half hour or more, hopefully more, of exercise. You know, again, our lymphatic system helps. You know, it's, it's the uh, septic system of the body. And it, it doesn't really have a pump. It's, it's relying on people to get up and get moving uh, in order to clean itself out. So we got to get up. We got to be active. Uh, Cindy and I just got back from, uh, we probably hiked about a mile and a quarter, a mile and a half out and up, uh, you know, in through the mountains and all, and, and rough terrain too, where it's just strewn with rocks and you're going up a hill and then you're coming back down a hill. Uh, so, yeah, we, we did about three miles, uh, which I would say was probably the equivalent of a good four or five mile hike on flat land. And, and that's typically what we try to get in every day, at least that. There, there were times in my life where I would get two, three mile, three to four mile hikes in every day. You know, that's how I would start my day. And sometimes I would start it by getting up at 5 a.m. when I had to go to work at 8 and, uh, you know, getting in a walk uh, out in nature and then going to the gym. And uh, hitting it in the gym, coming home, you know, having a shake with fresh juice loaded with goodies like, you know, ginger, for instance, and uh, greens such as uh, spirulina or chlorella, which are blood purifiers with fresh juice. And that's giving me a lot of life force. It's also giving me a lot of minerals and it's helping the body stay alkaline and boost your immune system. There's a lot of things you could add to that, like moringa. And, um, gosh, there's so many things you could add to it to, to just boost the effects. But I, I feel like that's one of the best ways to start the day. So, you know, that would be how I would start when I was still in the matrix and uh, then start my 8 o'clock uh, job, which would end at 6 o'clock. And typically before I would, you know, go and eat anything, I'd go again for about another three-mile uh, walk around this lake that I used to go to and uh, then have some something to eat, and then do some meditation and qigong. And so it, we can make the time for things. It's all, always a choice. And it's so important for us to take care of ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, holistically. And you could build your immune system. It's, it's all about what you bring into your body. If you are, you know, in a rush and you're taking things in like McDonald's and Burger King and all that, you know, that's going to deplete your uh, immune system. It's not going to boost it. And so when we take in processed sugars, if you're eating a lot of candy, a lot of sweets, those things are not good for your immune system as well. So bear in mind that you are what you eat. And uh, most definitely, we can affect our health by our choices to such a great degree. 
And obviously, you know, there's a lot of things we have to contend with in this world. And, you know, what's really going on behind the scenes, you know, that's for everybody to make up their minds and uh, each to come to their own conclusions. So, my friends, I want to thank you again uh, for your support on Ko-Fi and also on Patreon, uh, up to 102 Patreons. So we're very thankful that that side of the family is growing as the uh, demonetization is uh, still ongoing. When we you know look at the things you know, like right here, this morning's video, and it's interesting because there are ads running and it says limited, but then uh, basically, uh, they just don't pay you for it is what it is. They might pay you four cents, something like that. And, uh, and there's ones like this one, everybody has been talking about, uh, it's 8,000 views. I really think it's probably more like 30,000 views, uh, but it's still limited and it's still under review from days ago. And there's one from, and most of these, all, they all come out basically limited at first and eventually get flipped. And so, you know, some of them they don't find suitable for whatever reason. But, but you know, the bigger picture, it's really a war on the uh, First Amendment, which you guys understand. So I, I appreciate your support. As always, my friends, stay safe out there. Take your precautions. Be prepared for anything. Keep yourself healthy and your family. God bless and namaste.